Gorilla Com going 10 8. Featuring the Ula Epic Bag. Amphibious style. Fourth of July weekend, and we're camping. A little excursion out in the woods. I got my two girls with me. My main girl's back home. She doesn't like primitive camping because she uh, doesn't like the lack of bathroom facilities. But uh, my girls are not that modest, so I got them while they're young. But anyway, I got my Ula Epic uh, Do Everything bag. And what a perfect place to test out its waterproofness or water resistance. So I'll leave it in the water for a little bit. Have it uh, just float around a bit or whatever and see what happens. So far the bags have been floating around for about an hour and a half. The kids have been using it as a flotation device. A big old lake inner tube, I guess. And it's got all my crap in it. All my 72 hour or in my case, it actually works for a week. I got enough food in there for a week for me. My shelter, cold weather gear, extra clothing. I even have my 38 Special in there. My fire kit, part of my medical kit. It's got everything in there. I just took this out of my truck, came out here with the kids. They're over there catching tadpoles. And, uh, we're gonna see if I'm gonna have a comfortable night tonight. So I'll just moor this over here a little bit, make sure it don't float away. And I'm gonna join my kids. I'll be over there. Well, this is about hour number two. It's time to flip her over. Yeah, it does float pretty really well, huh? Yes, the 38 Special is wet, but it's not dripping wet. No big deal, still serviceable. So in this 20 liter shelter bag that I have here, I had my gloves, work gloves in there, in there. They were protected, they're not, they're dry. This is like my five C's bag. I got fire, cordage, combustion, uh, cutting utensils, you know, all that good happy horse shit. There was some droplets of water on the outside, but inside bone dry. And this is my fire kit, and of course it's like three layers of, uh, of uh, protection there for moisture, so that's bone dry. And remember, this bag was submerged in the, in the lake. This is my rain gear, and it's just got some surface moisture on it. Here is uh, 
a plastic bag, a drum liner, just a few droplets on it. Here's my hammock system. Outside is a little wet, you know, some droplets, Shh. some droplets, but inside the bishop bag with my hammock gear and all that, bone dry. So to me, that was a success because I'm, I'm not going to be fording, well, maybe I will ford rivers with this in the future, who knows, but this bag was in the water for three hours at least. I submerged it like a good three, four times playing around with it used it as a flotation device the kids were bouncing on it so so far that part of it is good that's my shelter uh, compartment and my five C's of survivability there with that I am golden everything else is just luxuries but well, we'll check that out I'm gonna set up my hammock for now so here's one of the belt pockets here that comes uh, standard and I do have some water in there just a little bit just trying to drain it out I guess it wasn't much but there was water in there the other pocket was a little bit worse but they're just the regular zipper the uh, K YKK zippers but uh, I didn't expect those to be waterproof uh, just asking for too much there the panel the back panel here is already dry and we hiked down from the lake about maybe a half hour ago and it's already dry being out in the sun like this. This is dry, yeah. This material here is still a little bit damp. The belt's still damp. Shoulder strap, they're dry. And in here, where this pocket goes into, is wet. Okay, so... You have this pocket here that holds your uh, foam pad that keeps the form of the uh, of the pack. And of course, as expected, it's got some water in it. Not too much. A lot, a good chunk of it drained out, but it's it's not like you have a gallon or two of water weighing you down. It does dry pretty quick. And if you just you know keep it suspended like this uh, for a couple of hours maybe it'll all be dry so that's just the harness part right there and it totally lived up to my expectations and then some being dunked on the, in the lake for a while and abused so here's the content of the Sea to Summit 35 liter bag that I had on the harness there the uh, Ula Epic harness system this top side here is damp this is a thermo rest sort of like their version of a whoopee it's lighter than a whoopee and I think it's even warmer than a whoopee uh, good stuff it's moist but it's not drenched or this is a Sol SOL bivy completely dry This is my cook set, a little damp, but it's in the dry bag, completely dry inside. This is my food, four days worth of food. Damp on the outside, but I imagine the inside is perfectly dry. Make some room over here. This is completely dry. Light. Uh, Sadie, hold on. And the rest of my gear. This is a light base layer, completely dry. There's a couple of drops on it, but it's in a dry bag, so there's more degrees of uh, waterproofness there. This is my heavy base layer, completely dry. That's it for the bag, and, and inside the bag, there's only drops of water. On the top here, I did the recommended three rolls, one, two, three, and then I secured it. But then again, remember, I submerged this completely underwater a good three, four, five times. And then I just left it floating around in the water for three hours and also messing with it. But 
If it could survive this, it could survive any hurricane or torrential rainstorm if, if you're going to backpack with this. So this test is a success. And within half hour, it will all dry like if nothing ever happened. Yeah, the inside here, I just see droplets of water. I'm sure if I roll this up a good five times maybe, five to six times, it would be completely waterproof. A lot of people won't get no justice tonight. So a lot of people won't grab the